So let's move into the lighter topic of sexual abuse and cover-ups in the church. Um, we're not talking about the Catholic Church this time. This is a topic that we've covered uh, quite a few times on the nonprofits now, um, but we have some updates. I'm talking, of course, about the Southern Baptist Convention and the report that was released at the end of last month. Now, this is a report that was done by an independent group, um, Guidepost Solutions. Um, it was commissioned by the Southern Baptist Convention to get to the bottom of all of these things that have been coming out about them over the last three years. Um, so this report took seven months to compile. They primarily looked at, at extensively at data that they had from the last 20 years, but the report does go into situations that happened going back to the 60s and before. Um, essentially, it's no surprise we have found that the Southern Baptist Convention and the Southern Baptist denomination, all the churches that fall under that umbrella, have a big problem with systematic abuse of both children and adults. And the, the big issue in this report that they found is that the decisions of what to do when a victim would come forward was largely left up to a small core group of people within the executive committee. And time and time again, they chose not to protect the victims who were their flock in their churches, but to preserve the reputation and the image of the Southern Baptist Convention. So, of course, this is not surprising. It is very frustrating. We are getting a lot of different responses. The report included some action items that the Southern Baptist Convention could take if they wanted to rectify the situation um, as best as they can, because I personally don't think that there's really anything you can do to rectify hundreds of counts of abuse and cover-ups. Um, but I guess the next question is to see is, will they actually do anything and will this get any better? And of course, why the fuck is this happening? Um, so I would love to hear all of your thoughts about this, because there is quite a bit that we can talk about here. Um, let's start off with the whole moving on to a lighter topic. Let's talk about sexual abuse in the church. Yeah, you and I have different <laughs> ideas of what lighter is. Clearly joking. Oh, my word. I just I, sometimes you just have to laugh when you can't cry anymore. No, that's real. That That's real. I, I mean, like. It, it's it's kind of interesting. Like this is like an update about the um, uh, leaders being um, uh, utilized in in a certain way of like putting basically like some of the things that came to light concerning these whole uh, sexual abuse scandals with the SBC. It's but it, it's it's kind of funny when I was reading some of the article. It 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 seemed to me even though that it was supposed to be an independent um, organization that was doing this particular uh, study. I, it seemed a bit um, to the point where they were kind of empathetic to the leadership of the SBC. I, I, that's that's something I gathered, um, and this is um, and 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 this is something I said specifically. So it looks like the SBC took some direction from the Catholic Church, and their investigation revealed that for many years, a few senior EC leaders, along with uh, outside counsel, largely controlled the EC response to these reports of abuse. But the article states that the most recent list includes the names of hundreds of abusers thought to be a affiliated at some point with the SBC. So it does not sound like a few leaders to me. So like, it, because like one of the things that they also said, like, is that the SBC was saying that, oh, it was just only a few bad apples, right? It was a few, you know, a few leaders that, you know, happened to do this and it was egregious, but, you know, there's always going to be bad apples. And so that's that, that's that. But it's, it's, it's not just, a few people as, as like the report starts to, um, to actually show. Um, and it's even more disgusting when they said that in service of this goal, survivors and others who reported uh, the abuse, as you mentioned, Genevieve, were ignored, disbelieved, or met with constant refrain that the SBC could take no action due to its policy regarding church autonomy. And if that ain't a load of bullshit, I don't know what it is. I don't know what is. Um, Cindy, uh, talk about some bullshit with me real quick, if you don't mind. 
I can talk about bullshit all day if you want. <laughs> um, yeah, so what what is staggering in these different uh, religious sexual uh, abuse uh, cases is that every time the leaders are notified, uh, the, the congregates uh, complain about it. Um, they rarely um, uh, file complaints to the police but they are systematically silenced. As you said, uh, it takes decades of work from, uh, often from a very small number of victims, like it was uh, in this case, it's one victim who started the investigation uh, to uncover the, 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 the scandal. It takes victims to do the work, which is outrageous in itself. Um, and, and the, the cynicism that's required to claim that you are basically better than everyone because that's what every religion proclaims. Uh, and at the same time, uh, raping kids and covering up those who do it uh, is just pure evil to use their vocabulary. So when you have an organization whose doctrine revolves around the idea that you are the chosen people uh, that uh, God speaks to us, that um, we have a direct link uh, to him, that you cannot be good without this God that we have. Uh, there cannot be any acceptance of the very idea that someone inside this institution can be uh, evil or act evil. Uh, and since the image projected by the organization is crucial to its uh, very existence, uh, there is very, very strong incentive to keep scandals uh, under, the, under the rug. We cannot trust uh, religious organization, just like we can trust big companies uh, or banks or even the police. There's the, the same issue uh, in there. We need to forget the fantasy of the good priest at the center of the community that we inherited from uh, medieval Europe. Priests are humans, nothing more, nothing less. And religion at this point are criminal organizations, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, and that's not hyperbole nor conjecture. That's fact, because it's been documented. See, said, report. Teo, um, before you explode, because I did see like the, the, um, the I don't know, like the cartoon emoji of the... Um, of the angry face, Anger. yes, the angry face. I, I, um, I, I'm going to give you a chance to go ahead and vent because that's self care. So go ahead, please. I'm fucking sick of tired of talking about this. Whenever, the, uh, as as you said, the evangelical church is following the Catholic church steps. They are protecting pedophiles. Uh, this has been happening for years, decades. We, I have talked so many times about Catholic church doing unspeakable awful things to children not even killing them and burying under their school in canada not only abusing them not only using them as sexual slaves uh, at orphanages uh, all the times all the priests that we have been talking about all the cases that happened with the jehovah witnesses in australia bacha basi this uh, pakistani uh, tradition where they raid little boys uh, all the mormons and their their close uh, cults where they marry young girls with uh, older guys. And now it's not surprise. We know that these things have happened, but now we finally have confirmation that evangelicals are the same pieces of crap. They do the same shit. They rape children. And they don't even have the, the awful excuse that the Catholic Church has like, oh, no, it's because the Catholic Church doesn't let those guys have sex and they prey on little children. These guys have wives and whatever. Uh, and they are just fucking pieces of shit. This week, the leader of the Iglesia La Luz del Mundo, uh, in English, that is Church of the Living God, Pillar and God of Truth, the Light of the Words. Yeah, that's a name that you can Google. Uh, the article is going to be in the description. Uh, he was, uh, oh, sorry, the name of the guy uh, is Nason Joaquin Garcia. He is the leader of this church from Mexico. This church has uh, churches in 60 countries. And this guy just um, was abusing little girls using his power. And mm. it's been protected by, by his followers. People try to defend them. And to see that all 
religions do the same. They have these awful guys, the priests in power. They let them rape little children and they, they protect them. It totally upsets me and makes me extremely, extremely, extremely angry. It's awful. It's disgusting. And I wish I didn't have to keep talking about this because it really, really makes me extremely upset. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I, I get you. And, and it's, it's, it's very upsetting um, when you're constantly... And and I and I, it's kind of interesting. In in the back of my mind, I was even thinking about like when we were actually preparing for this show. I was thinking like, damn, these churches actually keep us in business because they constantly are doing awful things to children, and we and they keep on giving us stories to talk about them, and and yet you know, the, the argument is the ones who happens to be agnostic, the one who happens to be irreligious, the one who happens to be a non-believer or without morals, which right now, when I look at stories like this, is absolutely laughable in a very serious yet sad, sad way. But Genevieve, I want to ask you specifically because I know that you are living in the Bible Belt now. Um, where the Southern Baptist Convention is quite prevalent. Uh, matter of fact, I don't know if you all knew that the Southern Baptist Convention is actually the second largest denomination of Christianity in the United States. And um, obviously they are not um, without their faults. Uh, I talked about previously the, um, uh, the, the SBC, the way that they came about is because they had a ought with the, uh, with the North because they wanted to keep slavery and... <laughs> And so a lot of and and so they split from um, the Baptist Convention to form the SBC because they actually wanted to keep slavery. And and to be honest with you, they were more biblically sound. They were actually more biblically sound than their northern neighbors. But um, I just want to get your thoughts. Like when you when you, growing up not religious, living in the Bible Belt now. Um, and this is not necessarily your environment that you you just kind of came into it later and you see or you hear the murmurings or read things like this. What are your thoughts specifically like um, on the outside looking in per se? So I will say, well, first of all, I'm glad to say that I have recently moved out of the Bible Belt. So I am back. I'm back up. I'm back up. By the Mason Dixon line. So we're, we're, we're good there. But but I will <laughs> say that it. It was an incredible culture shock to mm. begin to understand why this happened. Because just as Teo pointed out, this isn't just the Catholic Church. This is not just the Southern Baptist Convention. This is also Jehovah's Witnesses. This is Mormons. This is, this is every single Christian denomination under the sun. I know I live close to Pennsylvania. There's a lot of abuse going on with the Amish. It's... And it's a problem that I think comes from two things. Primarily, number one, being in power in a church is something that it's, it's a position that attracts people who have a desire to have power over other people and who have a desire to, to you know, be influential in their community. It is a perfect cover for people who are just predisposed to be this type of evil um, to steal a page from their work. But the second thing is that it does come back to the Bible. It really, mm -hmm. really does. Because the Bible tells you that all sins are equal. All sins are equal. And it tells you that, you know, that the patriarchy is, is righteous and that, you know, the men are the leaders in your church and they're the leaders in your home. And so essentially what you have to do to protect your godliness is to keep women and children as second-class citizens, and to protect the honor of the men in this group. Um, I am not surprised that, and, and I'm so glad that you brought up the Southern Baptist role in slavery, because unsurprising, they were directly responsible for a large part of slavery in America and Jim Crow laws, and they have a record of atrocious abuses that get swept under the rug. And I say swept under the rug because if you grow up in this environment, if you do grow up as a Southern Baptist, you're not gonna learn this stuff. You're gonna be right. insulated from a lot of these worst stories. And so you're just not going to be informed the way that you should about the reality of the group that you're a part of. 
hashtag teach CRT, right? <laughs> but yes. um a yes. Times, yes. <laughs> a trillion times, yes. Let's say I'm gonna go ahead and give you the last word before we go ahead and move on to our final segment. Yeah, I always talk about the harms of religion and I really, really wish I had nothing to talk about. I really wish my program didn't have to exist and I didn't have anything to talk about because it's awful, terrible, and very sad that I have something new every single week. That's it. Indeed, I, I hear you. Um, yeah, but this is why we're here, guys. We gotta, you know, like I said, they keep us in business. What can I say? 